In the final section of this lesson, uh, we're going to make a first attempt at a user show page. Um, this will not uh, be the final user show page, but it will uh, give us a chance to see some of the results of the work that we've done in this lesson so far. Um, it will also be our first step toward uh, having a full set of the REST URLs for the user's resource, um, building on the work that we did with the demo app. So let's start with that. Uh, I want to start by opening up views layouts application.html.erb uh, and what I'm going to do is add some uh, debug information to our site layout. So let's see how that works. Uh, there's a, a Rails function called debug and there's another very useful function we'll be dealing with a lot called params. Uh, params is essentially a hash. In fact, it's almost always called the params hash. Uh, and let's just take a look at what that does. So if we reload the page, we get some useful debug information down here. So you can see that it's essentially a hash. It says it's a it's this thing called hash with a different access. But uh, you can think of params as a hash. And here it, it tells you that we're in the user's controller, and we're on the the new action. And notice that that's that's actually nice because it's not in the URL right now. We're at slash sign up because of the way we've done our routes. So uh, this sort of debug information is often useful when writing Rails applications. But of course, you don't want to show it in a production environment. Uh, you only want to show it in development. So let's go back to TextMate and say, let's only show debug params if, or we can use a conditional at the end of a line, if rails.env, so this special Rails variable is available for things like this. So the Rails environment is rails.env, and there's a Boolean that lets us test to see if we're in a development environment. Rails.m.development question mark. And so this will now only show in a development environment. Now, if we go back to the terminal, we can see that uh, inside the console, we can do rails.env, and we can see it's development. And here we go. Development question mark should be true. Uh, there are two other environments there's the test environment and the production environment. And of course, these are both false. But if we go over to uh, this other terminal window here and open up the Heroku console, we can see the environment that Heroku is running in. And as you might guess, it's production. So rails.env.production uh, should be true. And dot development is false. What that means is that this debug information will not be shown in our production application. Now, at this point, we actually want to create a real user. Uh, this console here was created in a sandbox. So now let's open a new console not in a sandbox. And now let's uh, create a, a new user. I, I like to use the create bang method in this context just to make sure it uh, gives me an error uh, if anything goes wrong. Okay, so there we've created the new user. And now let's go over here and uh, take a look at the actual database. So I'm going to do open. Remember, this is the SQLite uh, database browser. So db slash development.sqlite3. So I have my system configured so that when I open something of an SQLite3 uh, type, that it will uh, open up uh, this database browser. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Uh, let's look at the, the actual data. Browse data, and let's go down to the users table here. And you can see here that uh, in the database, there's actually a record uh, corresponding to uh, the user we just created. So now let's make a basic user show page. Uh, it's not going to be the final user show page, but it'll uh, have something at this route. So let's take a look at um, users new.html.erb. Right, so this is a stub that we'll be filling in later. And now what we want is another um, uh, file in this uh, directory, in the users directory, for showing a user. That's show.html.erb. And for now, let's just put in the user's name and uh, the user's email address. Now, at this point, let's assume that we're going to create 
and at user instance variable in the controller. So let's, uh, let's use that now. At user dot name, and then at user dot email. So this is just a start. You'll notice that we're not using test-driven development at all, and uh, we're just uh, you know, putting in a little stub here to get a sense of uh, how the application is going to fit together. This is related to an important technique that's a, a counterpoint to test-driven development. Uh, when uh, when using agile methodologies, um, sometimes uh, this is called a spike. This is a, like a little mini spike, but the idea in a spike is that you rapidly explore the problem space just to get a sense of how everything is going to work, and then you either rewrite the application using test-driven development, or you use the the comment out uh, trick that we've seen before, where you comment some application code out, write a failing test, then uncomment the code and get the test to pass. So at this point, this is just a, a minimalist user show page. We can start by looking at it. This is the page we're going to be at. Let's take a look at Remember from the demo app, it's going to be slash users slash the ID. In this case, it's just slash user slash one. We can see that there's a routing error. There is no such uh, route. So let's fix that. Remember, there's a way to get all of the REST URLs for the user's resource. Um, it's with the line resources, users. This is what we use in the demo app. And this comes with a new action for in the users controller for free, so we can get rid of this get user slash new uh, line. And if I save it now, let's take a look and see what happens. It should still be green. Good. Let's take a look at this page. Okay, so undefined method name for nil, nil class. Remember, an instance variable is nil by default. And so what's happening here is it's trying to call name on something that's nil. In fact, we can see that in the console if you want to see how this works. This is exactly the same exception we just got. Um, so what that means is in the controller, we have to define um, an at user variable. Let's take a look at the users controller under app controllers users controller. So we need a, a show page, or rather a show action for the show page. Let's see, you go at user. And how are we going to find this user? Well, remember we saw how to find a user uh, from the ID. So we could do user.find1, and, and that works. So Michael Hartle, mhartle at example.com. Uh, but of course, in general, it's pretty crazy uh, to hard code the, uh, the ID. So but if you look at the debug information here, you can see that there's actually something here, ID 1. Now remember, I, I said that this stuff down here is the params hash. And so what this says here is that there is an ID in the params hash with value equal to 1. Uh, now you, you might notice that these don't look like the symbol string sort of key value pairs that you might see in a hash. This is a particular way of looking at a hash um, in a, a format called YAML, which stands for YAML ain't a markup language. Uh, but what this says in YAML is that there's a hash key ID and it has value one. So what that means is that you might be able to guess in here we can say user.find params of ID. So that was actually control P in TextMate. It knows that you often want params of ID. So let's see if this works. Yeah, so it's the same thing. And what that means is that here, params of ID is uh, the number one. It's actually the string one, but the find method works either way. You can see this. User.find of the string one still finds the user. So this is as far as we're going to go with the user show page in this lesson, but of course we will be fleshing it out in a future lesson. Uh, at the very least though, it gives you some confidence that uh, we're going to be able to put a, a user show page, um, which we sometimes will also call a profile page, at slash user slash ID, in this case slash user slash one. That's the end of this lesson. Uh, in the next couple lessons, as I mentioned before, we're going to complete uh, the idea of letting a user sign in by first adding a password attribute and handling authentication, and then actually creating a sign-up form that will uh, accept a uh, request from the, the web and will create a user based on that request. So as usual, let's go and uh, do a commit. There we go. Let's uh, git add dot git commit dash m. I'm going to say um, added a stub user 
show page. You may recall previously that at this point uh, we switched to the master branch and merged in the changes due to the topic branch. But in this case, we're not done with this topic. Uh, modeling users is really uh, chapters six and seven in the Ruby on Rails tutorial book. And so we're going to stay on this branch until we're through the next lesson, at which point we will do the, uh, do the checkout master and merge. And at that point, we'll also uh, push the result up to GitHub. Finally, at that point, we'll also deploy our application to Heroku and see how to get uh, everything working on the live web.